Hey everybody, Shane here from CineSamples, and this is CineString's Core 2.0 update. Now we've done a ton of work on this update, we've revamped the whole entire GUI, we've um, updated the code base to, to make not only quality of life changes, but also massive functional changes. Uh, we've redone, recut, re-denoised the whole sa sample set, so it should sound better, it should feel better, it should look better, it should uh, function better and play better all across the board. So there's a lot to jump into and a lot to chew on, but uh, let's just start with the sounds. So um, these sample sets have been completely redenoised. So if you're used to the old sound of CineStrings Core, uh, you should hear a, a big update here. So let's let's play some violins legato. Really fun, really great sound. So let's jump over to the spot mix. I'm just gonna go through these one by one. Close mix. That had a little bit of spot in it. It's not a bad, not a bad option. But here's the close by itself. Let's get some room. Here's that surround mic. And then um, you'll notice that the custom mix, you know, clicked on when I started clicking over around these. But we have a whole suite, just like in the last um, version of CineStrings Core, of uh, mix presets. So the full mix, dry, close, roomy, ambient, that just kind of walks you through the different mic positions and mixes. But um, we've got this bright mix that's close and room together. And we also have this warm mix that's a room and surround together. So you got a bunch of great starter options there, but the full mix is, you know, what we think is the best starting point and just really sounds phenomenal. And let's uh, hear some other instruments. So that's the that's the violins one, but uh, let's hear some violas. And then some cellos. That's on just the full mix. Yeah, there we go. Sounds really, really good. I love the chills in this library. Sound a lot like the Lord of the Rings cellos to me. Love all that. 
And then uh, let's go and try out some bases here. And then here it is with the ensemble. So all in all, I hope you notice how absolutely quiet it is. Uh, in the last version of Cinestrings, ensemble patches like that would hiss so much that we actually had to include a room tone sample to sort of offset that. Now we have, um, especially on the lower velocities, we have maintained some of that room sound. It's important not to completely sterilize the samples, but um, they were definitely in need of an improvement and we did our best to do that. And um, I think it's worked out really well. They're wonderful to play and, and very, very clean. So uh, that's the mixer. Those are the, uh, the mix presets. We have the same kind of master controls on the front end as we did in the last version. So EQ on and off, low, mid, and high adjustments. And then uh, for the reverbs, we just have a simple amount. And then if you click uh, that button, you'll see that these are all the different IR samples that we have loaded. These are custom IRs and they sound really great, but... Um, Normally keep that down halfway kind of a thing. Uh, it's it's a great sounding room. Doesn't need much. Doesn't need much juice to make it sound good. Um, okay, so moving on, let's go to the dynamics. Um, so what we tried to do in the development when Steve and I, our product expert Steve and I were kind of kicking back and forth ideas for this update is we wanted to make sure that everything we carried over from the old version to the new version really made sense. Um, you'll notice that down here in the effects section, there's some things missing because we don't really know why people need much distortion for violins or chorus or flanger, things like that. Um, especially now with every single DAW having really excellent effects on that side, we'd rather not bother down the GUI or the CPU on the contact side. So uh, we stripped it down to some to some really useful features. But over here in the dynamic section, pretty much everything has been um, has been transported from the old version to the new one and preserved. But let me just walk through it for anyone who is new to this uh, library set. So we have the master dynamics, uh, which is on uh, uh, CC1. And I'll just show you there really quick. Master Dynamics, um, if you were to switch from a legato or a sustained uh, set of articulations to a short set of articulations like spiccato, staccato, or marcato, you would have the dynamics right now, this, this switch uh, bases them on velocity. So let's uh, hear some of those. If we've got some staccatos. The harder I hit the keyboard, the higher the velocity goes. And then um, you can also switch this so that it goes by the dynamics. So if you have really particular needs um, and you need to map out the dynamics of some short articulations, uh, really easy to do based on that switch. But standard, it's on velocity. And um, uh, attack sensitivity. Basically, what we've done is this is this has been ever since the 1.3 update, I believe. But the attack sensitivity allows you to get it's it's sort of a subtle change, but it really does add to the humanness of the library. When you play on a lower velocity, it's not going to adjust the dynamics. The dynamics are still tied to the master knob, but if you play on a lower velocity, it will actually pull back the sample start a bit and allow for a longer attack. And if you play really hard, it'll be a shorter attack. So again, very subtle, but noticeable. Uh, it's easier on chords. Let's... And then lower. It's an interesting little thing uh, to play with, but it does add kind of a set it and forget it fader, but um, it does add to the humanness of the whole thing, like I said. Uh, the volume range 
Fader is basically just it's tied to the di- to the dynamics. Um, when players naturally, you know, bring up the dynamics of the attack, their volume tends to increase, and lower dynamics have a lower volume. This gives you a good range in which that exists. So right now, if I have the range really high, it basically means that if I play really soft uh, or sorry, really low dynamics, the volume will be almost at zero. So check this out. That's a bit extreme, so what I normally do is I have it set about halfway, and then now watch the sweep. So depending on kind of the piece you're writing, you can set that at a good good range and a good level. Um, here's the vibrato and trim amount. And if you link this with this little link button here, it will be linked to the dynamics knob. Uh, That way, it's just a simple way so that when you're increasing the dynamics naturally with the CC1 or you're performing something in, um, as you articulate the new notes, uh, higher levels or lower levels of vibrato and tremolo will start coming into the samples. So it's just a good way to kind of get expressive. But right now, let's just set it back to, ooh. Uh, Right now, let's just set it back to middle ground. And there you have the dynamics. That's pretty much it. It should be fairly familiar uh, for those who are used to this library set, but that's how it works. Um, now on the other side here, we've got legato. So um, to, to get legato to function, you have to have the um, sustain articulation selected down at this little switchboard. And we'll get to the switchboard later, which is a really cool new feature that I personally love. But um, you got to select sustain, and then you have to turn on and off legato. So legato transitions are based on the sustain articulation and um, they sound really wonderful. I played them in the beginning, but let's do it again. Cool. And um, right now you can, they're just set to kind of in the middle. It'll work for everything. And you can see as I play, uh, the little white dot will move as it kind of reads how fast and slow I'm playing to adjust the speed and intensity to kind of what it, what it thinks should be right. but you can always adjust it yourself. So if you wanna play a slower, a lot more kind of emotional passage, you can pull the speed down, you can push the speed up for really tight, fast lines. Um, Same with the intensity, which is just how much oomph the transition sample itself has. So if you wanna hear a lot of that bow grind and tone transition, you can get more of that. Also, if you want to adjust the range in which this thing exists, you can hold down your option key or your alt key and click and drag, and it will either expand or retract the range of that control. So that's a nice, fun little trick. So if you want it to be a slow speed and you want it to maintain a slow speed, no matter how fast or slow you're playing, uh, you can set it kind of at a low range and a low value. So, um, but anyway, back to the the center, I think it sounds just great right there. Uh, This little button is a quantize button. Now this is something I can't really show you, but basically if you're playing a legato line in a DAW and you want to quantize your MIDI notes on the downbeat, um, when you click this button, this will set an automatic delay in the contact engine so that you don't have to nudge all of your MIDI notes left and right because the transition sample takes a little bit of extra time and is slightly inconsistent. So um, when you have that on, it just locks everything nice and tight and you can have good normal lines. Um, The ambience fader basically preserves the length of the legato transition, so you get a little bit more of the room sound that blooms out and it makes the legato seem uh, slightly more active and alive. A good middle ground setting is pretty much all you need, but if you're getting really particular and want to dial it in, uh, we we provided that for you. Uh, The other cool thing here is the polyphonic legato, and as you can see, um, the polyphonic legato kills the speed knob knob range a little bit but um well not a little bit completely it kills the speed knob range but this is what it does it, it enables you to play legato with with multiple notes so you have stuff like this mm-hmm. 
And normally you wouldn't be able to do that with a legato patch, but with an ensemble strings, you want that flexibility to be able to say, okay, the section is actually playing different notes and creating this nice motif. And you can have up to four, uh, four notes, I believe, going polyphonically. So that's legato. And the other section over here is the hairpin creator. Now, in the other, or in, in the older version of Cinestrings, there was a little bit of confusion that we ran into with our users um, because you were able to tweak the values of legato and hairpin at the same time. But legato functionality and hairpin functionality are actually using the same audio engine. So you can't have one and the other. You'll notice that if legato's on and I click over to hairpin and turn it on, legato is now off. Um, that is because hairpin is, is basically controlling how these samples play back and legato was controlling how these samples play back. So not only have we made it a little bit more intuitive, you know, hiding one while the other is, is, is on, but also we've changed the, the power on state kind of functionality, uh, to make it just easier and clear to what exactly is actually going on when you're playing back these samples. So the hairpin, it's essentially the exact same functionality. We've just updated the UI a little bit, tried to make it a bit more intuitive. So as you can see, you can select either by beat or by time. And um, this is just a fun creator and let's, let's hear it first, so. And basically what that's doing is it's going from a piano to a forte down to a piano, four beats each section. Um, now you can change all of this just by clicking and dragging. So if you want it longer, you pull it back. If you want it longer on the end, you pull this forward. Uh, if you want it a louder dynamic, you push it up. If you want it a quieter dynamic, quieter dynamic you pull it down. And um, here, let's see how this sounds. Actually, let's not do 16 beats. That's gonna take forever. Let's go back to four beats. gradual decline, and if you want to change the center, just click there and you can push that. So let's just do a double forte to piano to double forte. And if we set this to looping, it will just cycle through that double forte to piano to double forte. It's a fun tool and it really helps you kind of get something really consistent that you can dial in. You don't have to really be expressive or playing. Um, generally, generally, I like using just the dynamics knob to do this. Um, it's not an essential feature, but it is a really fun feature and it's a really cool functionality for people who don't really want to sit there and play or just don't have a MIDI keyboard that can do it well on the fly. You know, if you're composing in the plane or something like that, um, trying to trying to get your controllers and everything figured out is a little bit obnoxious. So this helps with that and um, hopefully it's just fun and intuitive and it works out for all of your hairpin creator needs. Um, you can also link vibrato to the uh, dynamic. So that's a fun little feature. Um, but let's go back to uh, the main page. Okay, so we've done dynamics, mixer, legato, and hairpin. Let's talk about articulations. So uh, in the past, the only real way to to split up articulations and, and things like that was through the mapping page. And we have preserved the mapping page. It's up here in the settings section and we'll get to that later. But um, we wanted to be able to just have a quick start rather than diving through 25 different patches like the old library had where everything is sort of split up and pre-saved. We wanted to just give really quick access via one patch to all of the articulations. So let's jump through these a little bit and um, I'm gonna, you know, we've played a lot of violins. Let's uh, let's do this with cellos, actually. I'm gonna pull the cellos up here. And, okay, so right now we have just sustains loaded, no legato. And 
then let's go um, tremolo. And you'll, you'll notice on the bottom left of the contact window, uh, as I mouse over these different buttons, it will actually tell you uh, a, a text readout of what this articulation is. And if you're like me and didn't go to, you know, some sort of music composition college and you don't know what this weird little diamond square is, uh, we can be helped out by technology and know that we're playing harmonics now. <laughs> or colenos. Or Bartok pizzicatos. Regular bits. And let's go through some regular articulation. So um, these are spiccatos, really nice and short. Uh, one of the complaints over the uh, legacy libraries and even some of the updates was that our spiccatos, while they sounded good, they didn't have that super, super tight, snappy feeling on the head cuts. And we've done two things to kind of help with that and push it into more modern scoring practices where there's a lot of ostinatos being used and a lot of really quick sequences being used. Um, one is we recut the thing. So it's a lot tighter, it's a lot more consistent. You can tell here, let's just play a little thing. So it's a lot tighter just as it as it goes. And um, we'll get to this later, but I wanna show you really quick. If you go into the settings section and you click this sample start, we've increased some of the sample mod times so that you can get really far into the spiccato and the staccato samples, uh, even further in than you might want, but um, we wanted to give full flexibility. So let's listen to this without the sample start. What is that? How to turn your dragon? I love that. And then now let's turn on sample start and push this a little bit. Nice and snappy. And if you want to go to even an extreme, let's just do. I mean, it's crazy fast. Really, really nice. And I think it still feels generally human. Um, just be really careful with the sample start, depending on the on the sound and the range you're playing in, you could start to cut too much into the head and then you don't sound like strings anymore. But certainly for, for really fast ostinato lines, it's just a really, really wonderful tool. So, and it sounds, it sounds great on spiccato, but also staccatos, because here. That that head is really nice, and it's such a such a realistic sounding head. But when you when you want that performance of the bow, but you still need it nice and snappy, it's a fantastic tool. Let's listen. And even down on the range, where normally it would take longer to get that note to activate and bloom, uh, on the lower part of the range, it sounds fantastic. So great sounds there. And um, let's play through some turtles. Sforzandos. Some trills, whole step, half step. We already played the harmonics and the rest, so that's that's kind of how you where you have it. So you'll notice as I went through and started clicking on new articulations. Oh, here are marcados. Forgot about those. Let's do these.
I love those. They they sound like the the Halo soundtrack. Um, Oh man. Anyway, um, you'll notice as I clicked through articulations, the articulation button started to highlight in yellow. Now, basically what that means is I have loaded this sample set into memory. So um, what I need to do is I need to start unchecking these things uh, if I want to purge those things from memory. And the way that you can do that if you're worried about um, you know system functionality is you just command click and they will be purged from memory. Now, they, they load really quick. Don't worry about, you know, ruining anything, but you can see that you can get it right back, get all that stuff dumped. You don't have to open and close a bunch of different patches. Really straightforward and simple. Um, yeah, so that's basically it for that. And um, I'm going to show you the effects really quick, but this can be changed to the custom mapping. And we'll, I'll show you the custom mapping in just a second. Uh, when the custom mapping is active, this map button will be will be lit up and you'll know exactly where you are. So for now, it's just sustain. Uh, we, we included the stereo if you wanted to do, you know, width and some panning, high pass uh, with a fun little knob there, low pass and the compressor. So anything we think you need to basically get started, um, you can edit by clicking on the actual name or you can turn them on and off with their toggle there. So that's the front end of the GUI and pretty much all that you can ever need to know about how it functions from there, but um, the advanced controls are all back here in page two. So uh, you can enable custom mapping and dump that on, but before we get to all that, let's go through the accent overlays and the round robins. It, it's the same as, as it always has been in the CineStrings core library, but what it does is it allows you to add short, medium, or long samples on top of a, say, a sustained articulation to provide a little bit more snap and clarity um, and maybe a little bit more articulation if doing a quicker line with say sustains. So if you wanna turn that on, it's toggled on and off there and you can select uh, what type of overlay, short, medium, or long. And we'll just play it really quick. I'll, I'll boost the volume so you can hear how obvious it can be. turn the volume down so it's not so obnoxious. <laughs> now you'll notice it's only activating when I hit the key pretty hard. It's because the velocity threshold is at 110. So it's basically saying that if you want to make an accent and you want to make that accent really pronounced, uh, you play above 110 on the, on the velocity and you'll get that accent overlay. Um, I can pull this down and maybe boost, push this down a little bit as well. Just provides a little bit of an extra thing. Um, doesn't sound the best when you're playing it on its own, but in the context of a score, if you really want a, a line to peek out, that's a great way to do it. Um, there was also some, I, I believe this CC selectable functionality, and basically what it means is if I push CC1, I can switch between short, medium, and long. Um, and you can change whatever CC that you want that tied to up here in this little window. But um, you were, you used to be able to switch between short, medium, and long via CC, and I believe one of the updates along the way, either 1.1 or 1.3, got rid of that, and it was a request to put it back in. So we hooked you guys up and made sure that that was there. Um, and then you can also tie this and link link it to the legato. So basically what this does is it makes the accent uh, triggered, that the accents that are triggered during a legato transition, because there's all that programming and scripting that goes on in the background, it basically says we're gonna delay the accent overlay until it's gonna hit a downbeat on your new note. So it just kind of cleans up the wonkiness. So if you turn this on and you're playing legato lines and it sounds all sorts of wacky and bad, uh, please don't bother Steve with <laughs> customer service emails, just click the link button and you should be good to go. Um, now over here we've we've played with the sample start a little bit but let's hear that again. Um, this is just in sustains. But if you push it you'll be able to hear a lot more of a snappy sustain start. Again we're getting kind of out of the realm of reality into computer generated noises. We want that nice, you know, I mean it takes time for a human to put a bow on a string and, and make a, a note sound. 
So uh, we want to preserve that as much as possible. But again, every situation calls for a different tool. So. We want to be able to give you this kind of snappy. Snappy response to, to the playback. Um, this short release button over here is for the Marcato specifically. Uh, the Marcatos are a, a tad bit long. Um, well, they're kind of in the middle between a short and a long. So let's take a listen. Um, sometimes you want something that has that performance, that nice bloom to it, that natural kind of a sound, but you also don't need it to be that long or it becomes a problem that it's that long. So what we've done here is basically we've given you a short release option where when, when activated, uh, if you play a marcato and then lift off, it will play a release sample. And that just gives you some flexibility. Without it, this is how it sounds. You get the whole performance, but with it on. Cool. Um, so that, hope that makes sense to you, but um, it's kind of a don't use it unless you need it kind of a thing. But when you, when you do need it, it's great to have. So then on this side, we have round robins. So if you turn off round robins, you can turn off round robins, but when you have it on, um, you're either going to select random or cycle. Now, currently it's set to random. That means when you're playing through, say a, a spiccato that has seven round robins, it's gonna randomly select one sample to play back. And that's giving you that really human feeling of inconsistency. Every single bow changes, you know, slightly different, these kinds of things. Um, however, sometimes a, a line or a passage will call for just you want to cycle through those round robins, one through seven and back to one kind of a thing. And um, sometimes it's for consistency. Sometimes if you hear a wonky sample and you you don't want, you know, number four to ever play for whatever reason and you just want number one and two or whatever, uh, you can set it to cycle. So if you switch this uh, switch down to cycle, you'll have this new functionality here that is a, a reset. So normally right now it will start at one and wherever you leave off, it will stop and pick up at that point. If you have which which basically means if you play four samples, you'll play round robin one, two, three, four. And then no matter how long you wait, when you come back and play the next one, it's going to play round robin five uh, this reset button essentially resets you back to one after a certain time period so reset with the timing about half will give you i don't know 250 300 milliseconds where you'll you'll play one two three four five you'll take your hand off something goes and then you're back at round robin number one so it's a little bit of a pro level functionality kind of you don't need it you don't really need to think about it but if you do feel like it needs to solve a problem or serve you in some way. It's there. We wanted to make sure that all of our legacy users who got used to having it and who were utilizing it in old projects could just switch out old Cinestrings for new Cinestrings without any issues. So that is that. And um, I think that brings us to our last section, which is the custom mapping. So uh, if it's not enabled, you can click that button and enable custom mapping. And um, from there, we have essentially what should feel fairly familiar, but with a, with a couple updates. So first of all, in the old library, you, you used to have to just... Well, there was a lot of inconsistencies. Let's say that um, some patches had all the articulations available. Some came loaded with certain ones and not others. Some didn't have every articulation available. Some had all of them. Um, you had to pick and choose sort of which ones would load what. It was a little bizarre. So what we did was we just said, okay, and on the left side in the, in the contact window, in the browser window, all you're going to get is six patches, violins, one, two, viola, celli, bass, and ensemble, the end. And um, from there, you can do anything you want with that section. So here you can just click the plus button and you can load any articulation out of all of the available articulations that you want. You can decide how that thing is triggered, uh, whether it's key switch, CC, velocity, pedal, or a MIDI learned function. Uh, let's just do velocity first for Um And every, here, let me just show you some of how these work. So if you have 
a CC, you choose which CC by this fader, and then the range at which it is played. For key switching, you choose the key switch that you want, and whether it's latching or non-latching. Velocity, you choose the range in which it's triggered. You can grab the middle and move these, or either side, and set them to how you want. We've got two conditions for everything, so if you want something to play on velocity and on pedal, um, you've got that as well. Pedal down, pedal up. Um, all sorts of all sorts of things that you can do to make a custom map here, um, but we don't want you to do tons of work. Uh, so what we've done is we've included a bunch of mapping presets, and um, you can go through these at your leisure. But I'm I'm going to just show you a couple, um, and it, we've we've included a little bit of a description, so you can click through these and um, see sort of what they are and what they do and why we built it before you click load preset where it starts to load a ton of samples. Uh, this was a problem on some of our older machines and some of our, our uh, older older users, not in age, but just users of our legacy library. They, Whenever they opened a new patch, it would just take so long to load that they couldn't really play it and figure out what they needed or if it, if it was what they needed without wasting a bunch of time. So what we've done is we've just created a bunch of presets and said, okay, this is exactly what it does. This is what it should do. And this is what's included. You'll notice the list of articulations that are loaded in these. And um, we actually put the button down there. We said, okay, once you've decided, I think this is probably it, you can click load preset and it just pops in. Everything works really well. It's all set up for you to play back. Uh, for for presets that have multiple pages of articulations loaded, you have this page switcher over here that you can go in and check out. And uh, let's just play through some of this stuff. So this is basically a key switch patch. Um, stuff like that. And in case you didn't uh, see as I was clicking around frantically, because um, I'm nervous doing a video, uh, we have done user assignable presets. So this is kind of something that beforehand, you would have to set your preset and then save a new contact patch, or save a snapshot or something like that. What we've done is we've said we don't we don't want you to have to go through that hassle. So um, if you have something set here, however you want it with all of your different rules and, and control surfaces set, if you click on your mapping presets, click save as, it will ask you to choose one of these presets, you'll choose the preset and click save, and it will lock that in for you. And you'll just know that's my, that's my regular preset. So um, kind of not completely necessary, especially with how we have everything built, but um, really useful for people who have very specific needs and specific setups and have that interest. So uh, there you have it. I think that's all of Cinestrings Core 2.0 uh, for the individual sections. And before we go, we'll, we'll look at the ensemble because it's slightly different, but um, this is sort of the update. This is what we've done and uh, we're excited about it. It sounds phenomenal to my ears and um, really a step up from, from the legacy patches. We've put a lot of, of work and effort into this across all of our different departments, whether that's on the production side, the coding side, the UI graphics side, and uh, we hope you really, really like it. So um, before we jump out completely, let's look at the ensemble section because there is a couple of not new features, but just features that we should show off because they look good and sound good and um, they should not be missed. So same exact uh, back end for this. It's uh, very, very straightforward. Once you know one patch, you know them all. Uh, same exact articulation switchboard. Uh, the only difference is that we have everything loaded into this patch except for the violin twos. Uh, the violin twos sound great, but with the ensemble, you just sort of only have one section playing with the whole ensemble. And you can uh, double it with either the quarter range function or just by playing more notes. So really not necessary to include them here. But right now we have the arrange tab instead of the legato tab. And the arrange tab just lets you set the ranges in which uh, the different string sections are activated. So you've got bases from C0 to E1, and you'll notice that as I 
push these, if I push the right side of this one, it's going to push the left side of that one up and kind of move things up and around. And you can have them wherever you want. You can, if you want it to be more violin and viola heavy, and maybe they go further into their lower range and that's the sound you like, go ahead and set it however you'd like. Uh, but this is sort of dynamic and lets you do all the things that you need to do. And um, quarter range is now not on a weird random place. It's right here under the arrange tab. And the light, medium, and heavy just um, means how, how complex do you want these chords? How many notes do you want played back when you play just a simple chord? It's a fun little bit of coding, but when you play just a regular chord, hear the difference. It helps you orchestrate really beautiful voicings. And if you play the more, the more the merrier. Let's play some really fun low stuff. So it sounds really great and um, allows you to play the whole orchestra very simply. And uh, just because we like hearing how it sounds, let's play some extra articulations. So there you have it, that's Sinistring Score 2.0. Uh, we love the way that it sounds. We've put a ton of work into this. Again, I know I've, I've said that a lot and um, thank you guys for being so patient with us and for letting us, you know, <laughs> take our time with this, but it really it really makes the, the end product worth it. And we're happy with every element of this. And it's just a joy to play now. And it's, you know, we're freaking out about it. We're using it in our own productions. So um, we love it. We'd love to hear your feedback. Can't wait for you to, to play it. And keep in mind that this is a free update for all uh, owners of Sinistrings Core. This is not paid. Your regular uh, license will, will work for this library. All you have to do is go ahead and update it in native access. So should be a piece of cake that works for, for everybody. Anyway, see you guys next time. Have a good one.